fact, Professor Sain has said that in Norway, Mr. Prabhupada has been reported to the so they could start at 5 o'clock. Some of it is not possible. We start the function now. May I now request uh, Sri Rameshwar Singh Ji to be the welcome address.
राकेश कुमार राहुल कुमार देवेंद्र कुमार ओंकार रंजन और भी को, और, और इसमें थे स्वर्ण विजय पांडे नहीं आ पाए हैं नरेंद्र पांडे नहीं आ पाए हैं तो दिस दिस टीम वर्क इन 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 विलेजेस सर्वे कैरिड आउट और सर्वे इन नाइन नाइन हंड्रेड हाउस होल्ड्स इन थर्टी विलेजेस इन बिहार एंड क्रेडिट शुड गो टू दिस टीम वो कैरिड आउट दिस सर्वे स्टेनुअसली I stop here, and I will be eagerly waiting. We will be eagerly waiting for your response on the report. Thank you very much. Sir, Bihar Sarkar ke Manav Sansadhan Mantri Sri Prashant Kumar Sahi ji, Manav Mantri Giriraj Singh ji. माननीय मंत्री सुधा पांडे जी श्याम रजक जी माननीय मंत्री भीम सिंह जी पटना उच्च न्यायालय के माननीय न्यायाधीश त्रिपाठी जी श्री रामेश्वर सिंह जी इस कार्यक्रम की अध्यक्षता कर रहे हैं प्रोफेसर अंजन मुखर्जी साहब श्री रामेश्वर सिंह जी और उपस्थित बानो और भाई मित्रों अभी जब अमर सेन साहब बैठे हुए थे मंच पर मैंने उनसे पूछा कि Is this your third visit to Bihar? So, this is my 125th visit to Bihar. So, I have visited more than 30 times to Bhagalpur. And he also mentioned some other places he has, which he has visited dozen of times. So, I have visited Dr. Bhakta Singh, who has a देश का गौरव पूरी दुनिया में बढ़ाया है और जिनका बिहार से विशेष लगाव रहा है आज के इस कार्यक्रम के अवसर पर मैं अपनी ओर से अपनी सरकार की ओर से उनका हार्दिक अभिनंदन और स्वागत करता हूँ तो आज के इस कार्यक्रम में दो लोगों की अनुपस्थिति हम लोग उठा रही है एक तो माननीय मुख्यमंत्री जो अस्वस्थता के कारण आज नहीं आ पाए हैं और दूसरे डॉक्टर शहबाल गुप्ता वो पिछले कई दिनों से लगातार बीमार है और वो भी आज इस कारण से इसके इस कार्यक्रम में आज उपस्थित नहीं हो पाए मित्रों जो आज ये रिपोर्ट रिलीज हुई है विस्तार से हमारे अन्य लोग बोलेंगे लेकिन मैं कुछ बातों के ओर जरूर ध्यान आकर्ष करना चाहूँगा कि सबसे पहली बात कि लोगों में शिक्षा की भूख जगती है हंगर फॉर एजुकेशन जब हम ग्रामीण क्षेत्रों में जाते हैं तो लोग नौकरी की मांग नहीं करते अनेक अन्य मांगे करते होंगे सड़क चाहिए बिजली चाहिए लेकिन मंत्रियों को जनप्रतिनिधियों को रोक कर लोग कहते हैं कि हमको स्कूल चाहिए हमारे यहाँ विद्यालय नहीं है यह एक एक नया परिवर्तन एक नया बदलाव है कि लोग मंत्रियों की गाड़ी रोक कर उनको रोक कर करते हैं कि हमारा स्कूल इतना दूर है टीचर अच्छा नहीं पढ़ा रहा है और और स्कूल खोलिए ये जो एक शिक्षा के प्रति जो भूख जगी है तो केवल रोटी कपड़ा मकान यही पर्याप्त नहीं है लोगों को शिक्षा चाहिए और ये एक अच्छा संकेत एक शुभ संकेत है और पिछले पांच वर्षों में हमारी सरकार ने आने के बाद जो एक मेजर इंटरवेंशन किए हैं और मैं समझता हूँ कि उन इंटर उन हस्तक्षेप के कारण एक बड़ा बदलाव बड़ा परिवर्तन आया है और उन इंटरवेंशन में ये तो कि बजट का प्लान का साइज बढ़ाना बजट बढ़ाना और जहाँ टू थाउजेंड फाइव सिक्स में पूरे शिक्षा का जो बजट था प्लान ऑन प्लान दोनों मिलाकर ये फोर थाउजेंड थ्री फोर्टी वन करोड़ था विच इज अभी इंक्रीज टू एट थाउजेंड वन जीरो नाइन इन द लास्ट फाइव ईयर्स इट इज बिन जस्ट डबल और ग्यारह बारह का अगर हम देखते हैं तो इस साल इस फाइनेंशियल ईयर में वी आर गोइंग टू स्पेंड मोर देन 11,000 करोड़ यानी एक साल के अंदर ग्यारह हजार करोड़ का केवल अगर एजुकेशन पर खर्च होता है इसके परिणाम आपको दिखाई पड़ेंगे और उसी प्रकार जो प्राइमरी एजुकेशन है 
उसमें जब फाइव सिक्स में टू थाउजेंड सेवन नाइन्टी फोर करोड़ खर्च हुए थे वहाँ दस ग्यारह में फाइव थाउजेंड सेवन जीरो एट तो लगभग दोगुने से ज़्यादा पैसा पाँच साल में हम लोगों ने और केवल प्राइमरी एजुकेशन पर हम खर्च कर रहे हैं उसी प्रकार जो सर्व शिक्षा अभियान की बात आती है तो जब पहले बिहार पर आरोप लगता था कि हम सेंट्रली स्पॉन्सर्ड स्कीम्स में हम पैसे खर्च नहीं कर पाते हम पैसा ले नहीं पाते हैं तो मैं बताना चाहूँगा कि फाइव सिक्स में सर्व शिक्षा अभियान में फोर फोर्टी फोर करोड़ केवल खर्च हुए थे फोर फोर्टी फोर करोड़ और वर्ष दस ग्यारह में लास्ट फाइनेंशियल ईयर में द एक्सपेंडिचर इज थ्री थाउजेंड थ्री फिफ्टी वन करोड़ सो इट इज फ्रॉम फोर फोर्टी फोर करोड़ टू थ्री थाउजेंड थ्री फिफ्टी वन करोड़ और इसमें जो स्टेट गवर्नमेंट का जो कंट्रीब्यूशन है स्टेट शेयर है इट इज अबाउट फिफ्टीन हंड्रेड करोड़ तो मैं कभी बताना चाह रहा हूँ कि जो आज बिहार के अंदर शिक्षा के क्षेत्र में जो बदलाव दिखाई पड़ रहा है ये इस तरह के जो इंटरवेंशन में इस तरह का जो सरकार ने प्रयास किया है उसी प्रकार एक और बड़ा इंटरवेंशन जिसका लाभ हमको मिला है वो है कि स्कूल ड्रेस प्रोवाइड करना गरीब बच्चों को लड़के लड़कियों को और आपको मालूम कि हम लोगों ने प्रारंभ किया था क्लास थ्री फोर फाइव के लड़के लड़कियों को फाइव हंड्रेड पाँच सौ रुपया और क्लास सिक्स सेवन एट के केवल लड़कियों को सेवन हंड्रेड जो है और लास्ट ईयर हमने सेवेंटी लैख मोर देन सेवन मिलियन बॉयज एंड गर्ल्स लेवल प्रोवाइडेड विथ फाइव हंड्रेड रुपीज ये कपड़ा खरीदने के और क्लास सिक्स सेवन एट के लगभग सत्रह लाख हमने केवल लड़कियों को सेवन हंड्रेड रुपीज जो है एक कपड़ा खरीदने के लिए दिया है और अब राज्य सरकार ने निर्णय लिया है कि क्लास वन से लेकर क्लास एट तक के सभी लड़, सभी लड़के लड़कियों को हम 250, 300, 400, 500, 700 अलग अलग रेंज में तो क्लास वन से लेकर क्लास एट के सभी लड़के सभी लड़के लड़कियों को हम पैसा देंगे और क्लास वन से लेकर क्लास ट्वेल्व की सभी लड़कियों को और क्लास नाइन टेन अलेवन ट्वेल्व में पढ़ने वाली जो भी लड़कियां होंगी उनको एक हजार रुपया राज्य सरकार ने अपनी ओर से देने का और ये निर्णय दिया है तो मित्रों मैं क्यों ये कहना चाहता हूँ इसी प्रकार जो स्कॉलरशिप की जो स्कीम्स हैं जो हमने टीचर्स अपॉइंट किए हैं इन सारे चीजों का परिणाम प्राइमरी एजुकेशन और एजुकेशन के फील्ड में दिखाई पड़ता है और आज उसी का परिणाम है कि जहाँ टू थाउजेंड वन में आउट ऑफ स्कूल चिल्ड्रन की संख्या पैंतालीस लाख की बिहार में करीब ट्वेंटी जो स्कूल वाइंग चिल्ड्रन थे वो 45 लाख 26 परसेंट स्कूल से बाहर थे इन सारे प्रयासों का परिणाम ये हुआ है कि 2010 में ये संख्या घटकर सात लाख चौरासी हजार रह गई है और केवल 3.77 पॉइंट परसेंट जो स्कूल वही चिल्ड्रेन फोर्टीन ईयर तक के एज के बच्चे हैं वो स्कूल सिस्टम से बाहर है इन सारे चीज़ों का लेकिन गैप कितना बड़ा है और जब हम गैप की ओर ध्यान देते हैं तो आज हमारे यहाँ तीन लाख चौंतीस हजार प्राइमरी टीचर्स हैं बट वी रिक्वायर अनादर मोर देन थ्री लैख टीचर्स फॉर प्राइमरी एजुकेशन तीन लाख छत्तीस चौंतीस हजार शिक्षकों के बावजूद हमको तीन लाख से ज्यादा और शिक्षक चाहिए उसी प्रकार सेवेंटी वन थाउजेंड क्लासरूम आज ये स्कूल हमारे पास हैं प्राइमरी लेवल प्राइमरी और हमको और करीब पाँच हजार स्कूल और चाहिए उसी प्रकार हमारे पास जो क्लासरूम्स हैं तीन लाख अट्ठाईस हजार हमारे पास क्लासरूम्स हैं लेकिन हमको और दो लाख इकसठ हजार हमको क्लासरूम्स और चाहिए हमारे पास जो शिक्षक है उसमें ट्रेन शिक्षकों में दो लाख पंद्रह हजार शिक्षकों की आज भी हमारे पास टीचर्स हैं जो ट्रेन टीचर्स नहीं है तो, तो मैंने केवल आंकड़े आपके सामने केवल इसलिए प्रस्तुत किए कि हमने इतनी बड़ी उपलब्धि हासिल की लेकिन हमको कितना एक लंबा कितना बड़ा गैप है और उस गैप को हमको भरना होगा तो हम यूनिवर्सल प्राइमरी एजुकेशन का जो हमारा टारगेट हमारा जो लक्ष्य है उस लक्ष्य को हम प्राप्त कर पाएंगे मित्रों हमारे बीच में शाही जी उपस्थित हैं विस्तार स्वर विषयों को बताएंगे और मैं अमृत सेन साहब से एक ही आग्रह करूंगा 
कि आपका इसी प्रकार बिहार को आपका मार्गदर्शन मिलता रहे और आप इसी प्रकार एक सौ पच्चीसवीं बार आए हैं तो मैं एक और आपको आमंत्रण देना चाहूंगा एन के सिंह जी का मैं नाम लेना भूल गया था और हमारे बीच में बैठे हुए हैं तो मैं एक अमर हुसैन साहब से एक और आग्रह करना चाहूंगा कि हम लोग अगले साल अठारह उन्नीस फेबरवरी को वी आर गोइंग टू होल्ड अ ग्लोबल मीट फॉर चेंजिंग बिहार एंड इट विल बी इंटरनेशनल कॉन्ग्रीगेशन ऑफ ऑल टू बिहारीज और रिसाइडिंग वर्ल्ड वाइड और मेरा आपसे आग्रह होगा कि इसलिए अभी उसमें एक साल का समय है लेकिन मैं आज ही आपसे आग्रह कर रहा हूं कि आप उस कार्यक्रम का उद्घाटन करने के लिए और एटीन नाइनटीन फेबरी टू थाउजेंड ट्वेल्व क्योंकि हम लोगों ने दो हजार छ में हम लोगों ने ग्लोबल मीट फॉर रिसर्जेंट बिहार आयोजित किया था और इसमें दुनिया भर से नॉन रेजिडेंट बिहारी उसके अंदर आए थे तो पांच साल के बाद फिर हम उस प्रकार का एक कार्यक्रम आयोजित कर रहे हैं तो मैं अमर हुसैन साहब से जरूर चाहूंगा कि मैं आपसे रिक्वेस्ट करूंगा कि आप अपना समय और भी से बुक कर रखेंगे और उस समय हम चाहते हैं हम सब लोग कि आपके द्वारा उस कार्यक्रम का उद्घाटन हो तो मित्रों जो आज के रिपोर्ट रिलीज हुई है ये हम सब लोगों के लिए उपयोगी सिद्ध होगी और मैं चाहूंगा कि ये जो प्रतिची इंडिया ट्रस्ट है या और भी डिफरेंट सब्जेक्ट्स पर एजुकेशन से जुड़े हुए इस प्रकार के स्टडी करके और उसका इम्पैक्ट उसके रिपोर्ट्स दे ताकि राज्य सरकार उसको देख सके कि आगे आने वाले दिनों में और किस प्रकार का हस्तक्षेप कर सकते हैं तीन शब्दों के साथ मैं फिर से एक बार डॉक्टर अमर तसेन का अपनी ओर से अपनी सरकार की ओर से अभिनंदन करता हूँ स्वागत करता हूँ धन्यवाद
there has been significant and uh, very perceptible change and quantitative change and which has been very succinctly uh, noted in the foreword by Professor Sain while he quotes uh, Herbert Spencer that uh, progress is not an accident but necessity and he says that it is only half truth. Necessity, uh, progress, necessity and to work to achieve that progress with a typical road map is, is, is the real thing we should go to achieve the ultimate objective. I would only like to convey this August gathering that uh, in five years we have witnessed significant change though we were left behind so much that to bring our state at par with even national average, we have to work very hard, we have to make a lot of efforts. But still, I'm glad that last five years of stewardship of Honorable Nitish Kumar and with emphasis on education has seen some remarkable changes. Uh, I would like to inform the August House that we are moving ahead on the road map to improve elementary education. We are focusing on a very special program to improve quality education which would be launched very shortly. In fact, we were discussing in detail, we have been working on that plan for last six months or more uh, in cooperation with UNICEF and in cooperation with other distinguished uh, educationist of the country. Uh, our plan is ready to be launched. We were discussing with our officers, uh, we would be launching a program of quality improvement in elementary education to be carried on in a sustained manner in, uh, in next five to ten years. And I'm sure that that program is going to make dramatic change in the scenario of elementary education in the state of Bihar. That program, uh, we have envisaged, that program would, we would like to involve the entire populace of the state, unless the people of the state own the schools, own the children in the education system. I, I'm, I'm afraid that any effort by the state alone would not serve the purpose and would not bring about the desired result. Therefore, we have a program to involve the entire state, the people of the state, uh, make them feel that the school belongs to them, the children are theirs, and the future of the state lies in their hand. So we have a very detailed and comprehensive plan. Uh, we, would be, we would be initiating that process on, 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 on 15th of August, this year itself, and we will continue it for the next five years for the project and thereafter it will depend upon uh, what happens in 2015 elections. So uh, at least up till 2015 we guarantee that that program is going to be continued and uh, we would definitely, be, I, 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 I am very confident that with that kind of sustained effort, consistent effort, uh, the, the scenario of elementary education in the state of Bihar is, 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 is going to, to improve remarkably. Uh, since the report focuses on elementary education, I do not need to discuss other areas of education in the state of Bihar. Uh, it would suffice that uh, apart from elementary education, we are also working in the area of vocational education. We are also working in the area of secondary education. All those efforts will, 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 will uh, start showing uh, positive results in days to come. Um, in the improvement or the reform is not, a such, is not such a thing which, 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 will, which would give dividend in a short uh, time. It will take time. We have historically been left behind, but we will create history by making ourselves match with all other states of the country and make our state one of the best state in so far as education is concerned. Thank you very much.
uh, and um, spent a lot of time in the Vedas. I think the Atharva the Veda, there are a number of interesting mathematical puzzles. But the real um, flowering of mathematics in India begins in late or in fact early 5th century. And the gatherings were mostly in Bihar, in, in Patna, in fact, in the area then called Kusumpur. I'm not sure whether it's still called Kusumpur or not. And it's one of the defining moments is when Ayurveda was probably the greatest uh, Indian mathematician, one of the greatest in the world, came to, uh, was born in, in, in Kerala, moved to Kusumpur on ground that other mathematicians are here. And the company of mathematics is Anjan, as the Anjan Mukherjee, as a mathematical economist would know, the company is quite important for analytical work. <laughs> so, um, uh, and that's the sense. And similarly, when uh, Yijing in 7th century would write the book on the comparative medicine of China and India, this was the first comparative medicine book in the world. It was based on his studies in Nalanda that he will be writing this book. Um, he would be talking about the traditions of healthcare and traditions of medicine here. And then quite um, balanced way, he thought that in some respect the Chinese were ahead of the Indians. But ahead of the Indians were ahead of the Biharis, because that's what it is, what, what it really meant at that time. And in some respect, uh, Bihar or in, in India were um, ahead of, of that. So the whole center of higher education was based on um, in, in, in this state, and there, there are many other achievements, of course. Um, it was from here, after the book, that India would be united for the first time, by, first by the Nandas, then by Chandragupta Maria, then by Ashoka, and others. And this tradition continues through the group of areas and so on. And we have to recognize, and you know, some of the earliest works in political economy, uh, I believe this is called the Chanakya Hotel, so I don't have to remind you who, who that was. Uh, but that's very much centered um, in here. Now the thing to emphasize is not just that the higher education was so excellent here, which it was, and, and that not only that people came from abroad to study here, but also it had a basic educational base. Nalanda was the one university which we can now think of as being the oldest university in the world. But there were others at that time which were not as full-fledged universities as Nalanda, like Nikon Frida which are also in Bihar, and in, in, in fact in both countries. I've never been there. Sometimes when I come there next time, I have to take up uh, Shushi Modi on his kind of hospitality and go and visit there. Um, I might mention that the only educational institution outside China in which any Chinese scholar in ancient China I've ever studied outside China. There's only one institution, and that was in Bihar, namely none of that. There's no other institution to which any Chinese ever went, Korea, Japan, or anywhere else. Just one place, namely this place in Bihar. And Bihar, of course, an ancient message, and I'm very much involved in it, as they were mentioned, because I've been sharing the uh, mental group that we are about to launch for. I mean, the university is in principle established. Uh, and people like M.K. Singh was sitting there who has been one of the architects. But of course that basic idea goes to a vision of, uh, of Nitish Kumar uh, to revive the university. And, 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 and uh, it's a, it's a, it, the, the enormity of the thought is worth contemplating. The ancientness, of course, is just staggering. 
When the oldest European University of Bologna was born in 1098, Nalanda was nearly 700 years old. If you leave out Bologna and look for the oldest university rest of the world, when al Azhar was born in Cairo, Nalanda was 500 years old and functioning. He's already producing a large number of students with 10,000 residential students in the 7th century, as recorded both by Yijing and by Yunshan. And that tradition continued until it's destroyed in 1193, at the time when Oxford University was just a few years old, and when Cambridge University was not yet founded. So I think that's the big tradition you're looking at. And it's a tradition that's not, it's a Buddhist university, and I think we have to get credit where it is due. The Buddhist emphasis and Buddha's own emphasis, remembering Buddha means uh, enlightenment. Um, this emphasis on education, enlightenment, played a, a tremendous part in a commitment to expansion of education. And the, um, the, the fact that it was not treated only as a Buddhist university, but also a place where they studied um, astronomy, they studied mathematics, they studied um, medicine, they studied astronomy, they studied uh, public health, uh, is enormously to the credit. And that's actually what it gives us the status as a university. The question is often made, and I saw it, one of the internet things that I don't seem to have heard of Taxila. I do know about Taxila a lot. But it's not, we're not talking of a university in the sense in which Nalanda is a university with the faculties. And it's quite one thing to have a center of Buddhist studies, quite another thing. And they continue a lot like that. But uh, it also had a few other departments, but Nalanda was the first full fledged university without any doubt in the world. Uh, at that time. Now the thing to recognize uh, in the context of our focus on primary education is that you cannot have a flourishing higher education without a flourishing basic education. You know there are, you could do primary education without higher education. You can do primary education without secondary education. But you cannot do secondary education without primary education and higher education without primary and secondary education. There's an asymmetry there. So I think we have to, we don't have any real data. There's a lot of it is guesswork, by the way. One of the things, and since I've got the Deputy Prime Minister, Chief Minister here, here, mentioned that one of the things we have to find resources for is that it's you know, not lot, much more than one-tenth of Nalunda area is actually being excavated. Um, we have been very lucky, we've got the library, we've got the main gate. But there's a huge amount to be excavated. I said we would have studied mathematics, and that is an induction on my part. Because we know that there was astronomy was practice. Um, he would some say that he wakes up and looks out and he sees the astronomical observer, observation tower and tries to see whether it's covered with uh, mist of Nalanda or not. Now, you couldn't do astronomy without mathematics. And since mathematics was going on in a vigorous way in Kusumpu, which is not very far away, it would be very hard to take that there wasn't a great deal of mathematical study. But there are two problems here in finding records. First of all, astronomy leaves behind towers and memories of towers, whereas mathematics, of course, is basically pieces of paper. Um, I remember when I used to be in the, one of the trustees, which I was for about a decade, of the Institute for Advanced Study in Princeton, uh, Einstein's Institute. I remember talking with a mathematician saying, where do you, because we were trying to put up a kind of blackboard outside the institute. And the idea was that two mathematicians arguing with each other could stop and do it. 
So I said that when you argue, where do you mostly try to write it down? And he said, that actually is mostly on napkin. <laughs> because that's where over lunch when there's a debate, you can't go out and look for a blackboard. So the napkins are full of these writings. But napkins don't stay very long. That's one of the problems. And the other is that since we have only excavated uh, a, a, a small part of Nalanda, we just don't know what else is there. May turn out to be, well, whatever exists, we already know, continues to exist. There may be many more surprises coming. I'm very excited, if I continue to work with Nalanda, to see how we could expand and get a fuller understanding of what this university stood for. And then move to what kind of way, what was the catchment area of education, where there were secondary schools, where there were primary schools, and, and so on, and how did that system operate? And it's a huge challenge. So I would say even though my uh, involvement is as much in Nalanda as in primary education in the context of Putishi, they are integrally related efforts. There's no way of, uh, of, of thinking of higher education without going deeply into the roots of school education. Now the thing to recognize is that despite this tremendous, uh, glorious history, of education in the heart. The present situation in the heart is one of um, very considerable backwardness. There are many indicators in which it almost competes for being the most backward in India, not in every indicator. The thing that we emphasize in the report is that there have been a major progress, and I think um, the Honorable Minister for Education, uh, uh, Mr. Shahi, mentioned that. And it, 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 there, there, are, there are big changes, including the number of schools much larger, the attendance larger, the enrollment ratio 98%. Enrollment is somewhat deceptive because sometimes there is absenteeism still. And there are, at the same time, problems. Namely, that the there's still a long way to go. There's still a lot of people don't have um, schools, certainly adequate schools. There's still cases, sadly, of absenteeism of teachers, not just students. So there are exercises to be undertaken. But this is a great magic moment because a part of the world with a glorious history, almost unequal in the world, is, finds itself in a state of great backwardness, but not only that, it begins to make progress. And I think as um, uh, Mr. Shahi said, that progress depends on participation of the people. That's absolutely central. This is the moment, obviously leadership is, is important, and obviously Nitish has played a big part in that. But there is no question that what is, our report is also an invitation for is popular participation. We have to work together to, to change the situation, to arrive at a position that um, um, the state of education, primary and then also secondary, uh, and of course higher education too, it achieves the kind of excellence we might expect to, to expect from the heart, given its, its great uh, uh, past, great achievement, and great record, uh, which is really unparalleled. So for me, it's a great privilege. Uh, the um, Cecil Modi mentioned I said 126. I won't count exactly, but. I was offended when he said, is it my third visit? We <laughs> 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 have repeatedly in Patna, in Bhagavad <laughs> in many, many times, Nalanda and Rati, when my grandfather, Kiriwal Shen, 
Liverpool, de én egy szentfriszkó alatt fasz, ez kártyú vészúj nálam, de az már több ide van six or seven, de fasz kép szíjézet, de hét of ten. I remember asking my grandfather, why they don't they rebuild this university? And he said, well, maybe someday it will happen. But it won't happen any time soon. <laughs> well, it is happening. Yes, unfortunately, um, he, was, he was dead 50 years ago now. But on the other hand, um, at least I'm alive, and I can see it happening right now, right around us. And it's a great um, privilege to be to be able to participate um, in that regeneration, in that movement, which requires leadership, which requires public participation, which requires a determination to do the right thing, and which requires clarity of thought, namely how should we proceed? How can we make? I mean, money is, after all, limited. With the limited money, how, what are the priorities should be? How much excavation, what matter is to set up? how much we can do. Our, our focus at the moment is those faculties which could be set up with relatively little resources, easier to do, like history uh, uh, and, and linguistic and languages. Those things which also relatively easy to do, but which create employment in the area and no longer have an enormous economic relationship with the neighborhood and indeed there's much evidence that quite a lot of support for Nalon that came locally from around that particular area. But Nalon may have benefited in the past from that support, but it owes something to that region too. And therefore some of the things we are planning, like the information technology, would have a direct impact, we hope, in the regeneration of economic development of Bihar in general, not just education. So it's that <coughs> combination of clarity of thought, of determination, of participation, and leadership that we are looking for in 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 in, in Alona. And I'm really delighted. I see that the report is being distributed, so I'm glad that that's happening. So I hope you will have a look at that. I haven't tried to present the summaries, but there are fairly detailed report about the state of primary education in VR and the state of change here. But I'm really thrilled that you're all here and joining us in in the in the advancement of a cause which I think has a a, a depth and a demand for our commitment, which is hard to match. Uh, in anything else that's going on anywhere else in the world at this time. Well, thank you very much. So that was the first. And this has 
continued for a long length of time. And he has consistently alerted us to the necessity of basic primary education and its role in economic development. We should thank the organizations Adri and Pratishti Trust for providing us with this opportunity and to the project directors, Professor Ghosh and Mr. Rana for producing the document under discussion. I will not try to say anything more about the document since you have it in
that Adi could adopt a similar agenda for Bihar was Professor Sen's idea. And we have put our best efforts to make this, to make some progress in the direction to this report. Sir, we are grateful to you for writing a follow-up to the report and also releasing it this evening. We are also extremely grateful to Sri Shri Kumar Mohanji, our Honorable Deputy Chief Minister, for being the Chief Guest in this, this evening. He, along with our Chief Minister, has been leading the process of development in Bihar in recent years, and we are seeing if we have always found him, in him a great source of strength and inspiration. Sir, we are honored to have him amongst us this evening. We also have among us this evening Sipuram Kumar Shahiji, Shant Kumar Shahiji, our Honorable Education Minister. Within a short period of time, this minute to shift, he has already made his presence felt in the educational sector. And as he was speaking in his, during his speech, we have heard the recent contributions they have already made in the sector. Uh, we are sure under his leadership, we are will be scaling new heights in the field of education during the coming years. Sir, we are indeed privileged to have you here this evening. I must also express my great gratitude to Sri Ramachar Singh for blessing this occasion. As Chairperson of CEPA Patanthi, he has been giving us great support and encouragement, facilitating our work at the centre. By being with us today, he has again shown his commitment to CPA and the cause of education. Professional guidance for the professional agenda of our organization and intelligence of Pashna. In particular, I'd like to mention Sri N.K. Singh Ji, Sri I.C. Kumar, Professor Sachidanan, Sri Giridaj Singh Ji, Sri Mithishwabhita Pandey, Sri Shyam Rajak Ji, Sri Deep Singh Ji, Sri Anur Pankhar Ji, Sri Anjani Kumar Singh Ji, and many others. I cannot take them independently. Almost everyone is very grateful. I'm also very grateful to members of the press, not least on the fact that the, the photography session was really disastrous. It disturbs us a lot. I wish something can be done about it at the stage. Friends, thank you all again for making this a big success, and I now invite you for a tip, uh, for a cup of tea and snacks. Thank you.
प्राइवेट ही होगा नहीं प्राइवेट ही होगा ये मॉडल्स